Hey y'all, welcome to another Shadowlands Dungeon Guide. This one's going to be focused on the Sanguine Depths. Luckily, once again, you are going to have a summoning stone outside of this one, so you're not going to have to run to it. And as always, this will be done in chronological order, that way you can pause and play throughout while you're doing the dungeon yourself. The first two mobs that I want to include in this are going to be the Ticks and then the Brutes. The Ticks are going to be using in Gorge, where you want to interrupt that, and as well when they die, they're going to explode. The Brutes are going to be doing a big blue slam that leeches health from anyone that it hits as well as does damage to anyone who's outside of the range of them. The first boss that you're going to run into is going to be Crixus. If you're the tank, make sure you're tanking him in a corner that way Headbutt isn't knocking you around. Throughout the encounter, he's going to target a player and use Juggernaut Rush. You're going to want to make sure to position yourself so that other party members can between you and the boss itself to split that damage. At 100% energy, he is going to be using Severing Smash, which knocks back everyone so make sure that you're positioned in a good place that you won't be flying off the edge. Afterwards, you're going to create little balls. Make sure you're grabbing those before they get to the boss. The next trash that I wanted to include in this is going to be the Sentinels and the Oppressors. The Sentinels are going to be creating little swirlies on the ground that have giant rocks pop up for them, so make sure you're avoiding those. The Oppressors are going to be giving an aura, which increases damage taken. So you're going to want to focus these down in every pack first, that way you're not taking too much damage. As well, at some point, you're actually going to get chains on you, which are easily broken if you just run away from the mob itself. After a few more trash pass, you're going to run into Executor Tarvold. I like to pull him back from the area he starts because as you see these beams go by, if you tank him right where he starts at, they will both be hitting you at the same time. Whereas right here, you can see I always stick to the right side, watch the left beam go by, and then have the right one go by afterwards to make sure I can see it and avoid it nice and easy. At some point, he's going to target a party member and cast Castigate. You're going to want to make sure to move that away from your teammates because it does do damage to everybody around you. Throughout the encounter, he's going to spawn ads that leave these puddles on the ground, so make sure you're moving the boss out of these. And then we're going to move on to the third boss, Grand Proctor Borrelia. Throughout the encounter, she's going to be casting Right of Supremacy, which when she does, you get to see these little light orbs spawn on the ground. Each one of these does help you mitigate damage for this AoE damage she's going to be putting out. If you're the healer, make sure you have some hots rolling on your teammates to keep everyone up at full health. Shortly after that, you're going to see in this tournament, which everyone will take a little bit of AoE damage from, as well as these rollies will go out. Make sure you're not standing at them because they do a substantial amount of damage, as well as leave a dispellable dot. At some point, you're going to see the tank get iron spikes on them. Make sure you're using your mitigation at this point because it will be a pretty solid amount of damage and keep your tank up. Right after the last boss is a shield you pick up that you're going to be using throughout the rest of the dungeon. It has a 30 second cooldown where it actually creates a barrier that reduces damage taken by 65%. You can see our tank use it on some of the packs here but he wasn't really using it as often as he should have just to mitigate extra damage to make it a little bit easier. You're going to be wanting to get accustomed to using this because on the actual boss fight it is going to be very necessary to use. After the gauntlet, you're going to be fighting General Kyle outside. Throughout the encounter he's going to be using these beams that go across the platform. They can come from either way, just make sure you're adjusting to get out of those. He's going to be using Wicked Rush on different players. Make sure you're getting away from other players at least 5 yards or else you're going to be stacking that dot up unnecessarily high. At some point he's going to be casting Gloom Squall. You're going to want to make sure you run up to him and stack with your party inside of the shield item I was speaking about earlier because it does prevent the knockback. Otherwise you're going to go flying right off the side and you're going to have to go ahead and do the full run back to start this boss over again. And that'll be it for the Sanguine Depths. If you enjoyed this guide make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and as always thanks for watching.